Now that we've captured some packets with Wireshark, one of the things that we might want to look at doing is how do we view these packets and possibly filter them down to just those packets we're interested in. So one of the first things I'm going to show you in here is the time column. Now what's important about the time column is that it will show us either the amount of time that's elapsed from the beginning of the trace to the end of the trace, the time of day, or the one that I feel is very important and that's delta time. So if we come in and click on view and go to time display format, we're going to select seconds since previous displayed packet. Now what this is going to do is it's going to show us the difference between when this ARP arrived and when this ARP arrived. So in this particular example, this one arrived, this was the first packet that we saw at the beginning of the trace. This next packet arrived 887 milliseconds after this first packet. This next packet arrived 121 milliseconds after the previous one. And this one arrived 34 milliseconds. And this one right here, about 19 microseconds. So the key to the delta time column, or the time since the previous displayed packet, is that this shows us how long we waited for that packet to arrive. Now as we get into more advanced topics, we'll see that we can use this delta time to determine how long a server takes to respond to a request, how long it takes to insert a packet onto the wire. And we can use these to help us identify what is causing our network to be slow. So now that we've set our time to delta time or time since previously displayed packet, we're going to look at some basic filters. And the first filter we're going to look at is ARP. Why? Because we see some ARP packets in here and oftentimes we're afraid that maybe there's too many broadcasts on our network and ARP would be one of those broadcasts. So we're going to come up here to the filter line and we're going to type in A. Now the first thing I'd like you to notice when we type in that A is that the background turns red. And what this does is this tells us that the filter that we've entered is not correct. So we're going to type in ARP and we see that it turns green. And what that means is that we have entered a valid filter within Wireshark. So now we're going to come over here and hit apply. And when we hit apply, it will now filter down all of our packets so that all we're seeing is the ARP packets going across the network. So in this case, we can see that we see a number of ARPs for 10.0.0.60 from both 10.0.0.52 and 10.0.0.1. So what that is telling us is that both of these devices, .1 and .52, have data that they want to send to 10.0.0.60, but 60 isn't replying on the network. Why? Well, in this case, 60 is a device that we happen to have had on the network at one time and is now turned off. And so these, both these devices are looking to send packets to it. Now, dot .52, if we were to look at the traffic that would be going to 60, we'd see it's syslog. We had configured dot .52 to send syslog messages to dot .60, and dot .60 isn't on the network anymore. Now, Another filter we can do that's fairly easy is DNS. All we have to do is type in DNS, hit apply, and now it's going to show us our DNS queries. So in this case, we see right here that a workstation is sending a DNS query looking for this particular DNS name. Now if we come down and we look at the query response, Right here, we can see that the time between these two packets was 98 milliseconds. So that gives us an idea of the time between when we sent the query and when we got the response and how long that took. Now, it, just to verify that these are the same DNS query and response, we can expand the domain name query section down here in our detail section it's going to say that the response is in frame 58. So if we come over here, oh, there's 56, there's 58. And within frame 58, not only does it tell us that our request is in frame 56, but it tells us how long it took. So this is how we can apply some simple filters just by typing those filters in up here. 
we can type in HTTP and hit apply. And this is going to show us all of our HTTP traffic that we saw going across the network. So typically, if the protocol name sounds right, like SMTP, FTP, DNS, HTTP, we can type that in right up here at the beginning in the filter window and filter out those frames. So this is a quick way that we can go in and determine which protocols, if a particular protocol is in there, and be able to see that. Now, just as a note, down here at the bottom, it will uh, show us the number of packets that we had in our trace and the number of packets displayed. So this is a quick way if I want to come up and go back to DNS. Uh, got my cap locks. And I hit apply. It's going to show me that I have 65 DNS packets displayed out of 155 total packets. So I hope this helps you begin filtering down through those traces that you've captured and start finding those packets that you're interested in.